If you're tired of using the same old 808s over and over again that everyone else is using, this video is for you. Today I'm going to be showing you guys the three steps that you can take to make your own unique 808s. When we're making our own 808, the first step is to start with a sub bass. To do so, what we're gonna do is start by opening up a synth. What I'd recommend is using Toxic Biohazard if you're an FL Studio. Really, you could use any plugin that you want, but the thing that I like about Toxic Biohazard is that it has a lot of different functions in it that are gonna be really useful for us later on down the road. The first step is we're going to reset the synth that we're using to start with a plain old sine wave. As you guys can see with any synth, you have a whole bunch of different shapes. You have triangles, squares, what have you. What we need to do is start off with a sine wave. The reason why is if we transpose this sine wave down 24 semitones, what we get is a pure bass tone. If I open up an EQ here, you guys can see the frequency range that this sound inhabits is pretty much underneath 100 hertz. The peak is around 60 hertz, which is pretty much pure bass. All right, so we have a pure sub bass at this point. What we're gonna do now is shape it so it's similar to a traditional 808. How we're gonna do that is we go into our plugin and we're gonna change around the ADSR values up here. What I'm gonna start off by doing is increase the attack a little bit, just so if I layer this 808 underneath the kick, the kick actually has some room to cut through. The next thing I'm going to do is increase the release time so the bass now has a longer tail to it. I'll show you exactly what I mean in a second here. Alright, so now if I were to go in and export this to show you exactly how the waveform looks. If we look at what we have so far, this is pretty much how an 808 should look. We have the beginning area here which is going to be at full volume and then a tail end here. Now that we have our sub bass created and it has the same shape as a traditional 808, what we're going to do next is start coloring. What you might be thinking is why doesn't our 808 sound like an actual good 808? If we do a deep dive and look at what's going on with the waveform, we see we have a very traditional sine wave. We have the peaks and the valleys that pretty much are perfectly rounded and the same repeating pattern over and over again. This is what Pierre sub bass looks like. Now if we look at a more traditional 808 here, and we examine closely what's going on here comparatively, as you guys can see, it's pretty different from our pure raw bass tone. The peaks and the valleys here are a little bit less rounded. They have a little bit more of a sharper peak. And we have these little disruptions going on here, these little tiny bumps going on over and over again. So that's the name of the game when we're creating our 808s. What we want to do is take our traditional boring sub bass here and try to get it to match what this 808 looks like. That's what I mean by coloring our 808. What we wanna do is start manipulating it in order to match a more traditional, unique sounding 808. And there are a few different ways that we can achieve this. We can color our 808s by distorting them, we can add saturation, and we can also layer. So starting off, what I'm gonna do is go back into Toxic Biohazard, and one of the functions that I really like is this drive knob right here. So this is a pure sub bass, we can't really hear it, but once I start increasing the drive, we start getting closer to a more traditional 808. So if I open up an EQ here and I have the drive all the way down, it's pure sub bass, we can't really hear it, but once I increase the drive, you guys can see there's just a lot more frequencies in the higher range now. So I'm gonna peel it back just a tiny bit just because it's a little bit too much right now. I'm gonna leave it at around 30%, for example. And now if I were to export this and take a look at what we have here, you'll see something interesting real quick. So compared to our pure sine wave, we have something a little bit different here. With our pure sub bass, we had perfectly rounded peaks and troughs, but here the shape has changed a little bit and that's why we get this little bit of coloration. So to push this even further, what I'm gonna do is add a distortion tool on top. What I like to use is Fruity Wave Shaper. Visually what this straight line here represents is an audio signal that's completely unchanged. But once I use some of these presets and change the shape around a little bit, you guys can hear we have a little bit more color in the 808 now. Again, if I open up an EQ, here's how it looks without that additional distortion. But once I add the distortion on top, we just have a lot more going on in the high end. We have a lot more color in our 808 now. 
if I were to examine what's going on with the actual waveform. Here we have our 808 with both the drive and distortion on top. And if we zoom in to take a look at how this one looks, you guys can see the peaks and troughs are even more disrupted now. They don't mimic a perfectly rounded shape that we have with our pure sine wave. We have something completely different here. Again, this is exactly what we're trying to do. We want to take those rounded peaks and troughs and just completely change them in order to add a little bit more color and character into our 808. We could also use a saturator plugin. What saturation is, is a less extreme version of distortion. One of the ones that comes with FL Studios is in Maximus. So you guys can see here, we have the saturation area here. So if you start playing around with the threshold and the ceiling here, we can do some lighter distortion. So this is something that you can use if you wanna be a little bit more subtle, you don't wanna be as exaggerated with your distortion. A saturation plugin might be a better option. For those that aren't using FL Studios, one of the plugins that I like that is completely free in order to distort your 808s is called Camel Crusher. As you can see, it has its own distortion area here. So what I'm gonna do is turn this a little bit down, turn off the compressor. And now once I start playing around with the distortion, you guys can hear it just gets really intense really quick. And one of the plugins that I really like that's paid is a plugin here called Decapitator. This has just tons of great presets in it. It's a saturation effect, so you can just easily go in and select a preset here. It just adds tons and tons of color into your 808. Another technique that we can use is layering. So if we go back into our synth here, what I'm gonna do is turn on oscillator number two. And I'm gonna select sine number one instead of just a pure sine wave. We can see the shape of this is a little bit different here. And now I'm gonna go into the mix area and turn this up in volume. So with it at zero, this is how our 808 sounds, but once I start increasing it, And now if I export this, what we can do is take a look at what's going on exactly. You guys can see it's completely disrupted now. Our peaks and valleys are not rounded at all. They're pretty sharp. And we have this weird disruption going on in our 808 now. And once again, I can go back in and change this to a different shape if I went to sine two. It's a completely different tone compared to sine one. And again, if I export this, you can see the shape also changed compared to our previous layer. And this is why I like Toxic Biohazard so much. It just has a lot of different types of shapes that we can use to quickly and easily add different types of colors to our 808. Another trick that we can do is start playing around with the detune function here. That's just gonna slightly change the amount of disruption we have in our 808. Also, you can go into the effects area down here. Another thing that I like to do is just add the lo-fi effect on top, and then just take the filter to peel it back a little bit. And that's pretty much how you start coloring your 808 to make it a little bit more unique. Our third step is to go in and start calibrating. What I like to do is add an EQ at the end of the effects chain. And what I'm gonna do is take away the frequency range underneath 40 Hertz. The reason why is most speakers don't have the ability to produce the frequency tones that are underneath 40 Hertz. And so it's a good idea to get rid of frequencies underneath this range, just so we have more room for the more essential frequencies in our 808. What you can also do is increase the amount of high end presence in our 808. And I can go back and peel back how much drive I have on this 808 change the amount of detune. What I'm trying to do is just go back and play around with how much of each effect I want. Maybe I'll decrease the mix amount here, decrease how much distortion is in this 808, just to get it a little bit more functional and a little bit more useful in our beat that we're gonna make. And so that's how you make your own 808s. The first step is to start off by creating a pure sub bass and shaping it as if it was an 808. After that, what we wanna do is start coloring our sub bass. What we can do is start using distorters, saturators, and different layers that we can add on top in order to add a little bit more character to our sub bass. And the final step is to calibrate. We wanna make sure our 808 is actually functional. It doesn't have too much bass. It doesn't have 
to a little high end and we can start peeling back some of the tools that we've added on top, some of the plugins, in order to make it a little bit more functional and useful. And those are the three steps that I use in order to create my own 808. If you guys have found this video helpful, please do leave a comment down below, like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. My free drum kit is available to download in the description box below as well for you guys. And I'll see you guys next Tuesday.